I have a family now. Can't do a Kyle impression. <laughs> who is that an impression of? I was like, <laughs> wait, who is that an impression of? I was trying to do a Kyle impression, but it was awful. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to the reality guys. I'm your host, Billy Blinks, joined as always by my partner in crime, Brian. What's going on, my dude? Good to be back with the challenge, man. We are back. So, like Brian just alluded to, we are here. This is a special two-part episode. We are going to cover in part A here. This challenge, episode 15 of Spies, Lies, and Allies, just actually season 38 of the challenge. And then in part two, we will be joined by our friend Waleed, and we will be doing episode two of the Challenge All-Stars. That's week two of that season as well. Um, To kick this episode off, we're kind of talking pre-show. The challengers are super emotional, man. So so they are all in their feels. They take everything very personally, including if you don't play the game they want you to play. I mean, more so than anything, I mean, that's the big breakup I have with all these veterans. Is this is a big sense of entitlement just because you were able to have an alliance. And I'm mainly talking about Emerald. Yeah, you would also think that they've never played this game before. The way they act, like every decision is like tugging on heartstrings. Like it's season 38 of the show. Like they should know by now what the deal is. Well, no according to Devin, there's a set of etiquette apparently here that you need to follow a set of rules. And God forbid there is still a rookie or two left and they're not eliminated yet. No one else is allowed to do anything. And since you got your team set up early and you guys won a few of the daily challenges to start and then got on a streak, you're not allowed to disrupt that because if you're still in the game, it's because they didn't put you in to be eliminated. Like there's a lot of taking credit for everyone else and that theme kind of perpetrates throughout this episode and comes to a head later on i agree it's it was very bad it was building last week but i think it hit a breaking point today or yesterday what are your thoughts on amanda see on the challenge not a fan but i like she was i remember from Ari the one she yeah, was, yeah. like, crazy, but also, like, I think, like, she was hot on that season. So, like, mm-hmm. you kind of, like, like, ooh, like, Amanda. She, I think she, like, slapped somebody in the face in that season, like, really hard. <laughs> like, for, for a very justifiable reason. Like, you're like, oh, yeah, Amanda, you deserve to slap that guy. But she just, like, she's kind of, like, we were talking about in our Survivor, like, kind of coasting, I think. Yeah, to an extent. I, I kind of the thing I like about Amanda, I think she's kind of funny, but I just do like that she – it's almost like she just breaks the fourth wall. She's like, why am I going to try hard for you? I'm going to get voted in if I kill myself or not. Or like she goes over to Emerald. She's like, I'm going to come to Emerald. And they're like, no, you're going to screw up all everything. And everyone's going to get mad at each other. She's like, yeah, so what? No one likes me. Like, screw right. you people. Like, it's a, like you said, she's one of the only people that's like, this is how this game works. Everyone. Sorry. Right. Like, I want to be on the good team, not stay on yeah. the shitty team. Just because I squeaked out a goddamn elimination win. I don't owe my team anything they ditch me in a second like i th- yeah. i like amanda i i honestly don't. i don't i don't have any problems with amanda like it, it's a game show for money and she's <laughs> saying like i'm trying to win the prize which i mean everyone who is there signed up for the show to win the money so it's kind of like tough for me to like feel bad for any of these people where they like are getting all emotional about decisions like it's a show I mean, literally, Brian, that's the quote. I swear to God, we make our when we make our first challenge shirt, the quote's gonna be, it's a game show for money. Yeah, like, I mean it's it the Brian, it's a great, it's a great quote because it's very us, it's just like down to the point, like you're playing a game for money. There's yeah. cameras here, people like right. And I bravo. don't don't you think at some point, like if it like they let say like Devin's plan went off, TJ would say something. He'd be like, what, why, why, what's going on here? Why are you letting these guys and girls do, like, just run the show? And he'd yeah, stand he'd there calling them like, out. Yeah, he would stand there with his, like, thing like this where he's, like, you know, he has his hands, like, crossed, like, you know, like a prayer formation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, grilling people, but. Oh, did you see, speaking of the, the prayer emoji, have you seen the thing going around Twitter that they're claiming that that's a high five emoji? That that's I have, actually I have heard that. That's but I don't. I, it's blasphemous. A prayer, it's me. 
like who actually connects like yeah you never you never get full contact it's always like this this or like that you're never getting like i mean it's all about the dap it's all about the dap i mean i don't know the last time i i'll sometimes do like a hey up high where the winners are but like no one can make full contact you know like that yeah if you did make full contact like the root the glass in the room would break like all the windows would shatter I'll tell you who did make full contact, and that was Casey when we got to our immunity yeah. challenge. I always call anything an immunity challenge. It's like a daily challenge. She trumps um, Tori to, like, her soul left her body. The challenge was called Boom Raiders. It was, in essence, it was a three-way hall brawl. The, each team had a set of dynamite sticks, and the idea was that you had to be the first team to get 20 dynamite sticks. And it was a rotation where it'd be guys and girls and you would run to one of the other two teams and you would obviously truck the hell out of each other on the way there and you have to collect it. So before the challenge, CT and Tori had talked about Sapphire and Ruby working together, obviously because Emerald's winning everything and let's help, uh, ruby win because ruby's got more sapphires only got three members including one girl just emmy yeah. which was crazy that she, she had to do the did enti- very well today the entire child is it me like she seemed like she's gotten like buffer throughout the season like more in shape throughout she did not come off to me early on like someone that was like wasn't she she was like fat or like anything like that but she didn't come off someone that yeah. was like an athlete no, nah, yeah, you're right. She's like a tank now, dude. Well, she's like they they always are in that gym in the house, so it's probably beefed up. To be fair, out of any show, the challenge, like we're 15 episodes in. So these people have had to be there for a decent amount of time. Yeah, I would say at least like seven, eight weeks. Yeah, nine, it's, eight, a, it's it's a fair estimate, I feel like. I mean, it's yeah. a long, long challenge. Yeah, I would say it's probably like two episodes in a week time, or maybe even five days, six days. But so, we don't know. So I thought it was a good plan. Uh, Ruby Sapphire working together. Um, they work together well, just like in Pokemon games. So, mm-hmm. you know, what's, what could go wrong? Cow. Sweet tea. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, Not bad. Kyle fucking goes and steals from sapphire instead of stealing from emerald like pretty quickly in like his like yeah, second I mean, time out yeah do you think like, i mean he definitely did it on purpose one right 100 100 percent. do you think he was trying to be slick and like take one from them early so they were always one ahead so that they ended up winning in the end probably why he he he's a snake man like He's a piece of shit, dude. He's just, he just like, they, obviously you lie. It's that kind of game, but he just is just, I don't like someone who lies to you when they're smiling, you know? And that's what he does. Yeah. And even in his confessionals, he's like, oh, CT's a liar. It's like, dude, we've watched this show a long time. You do this every season and you act like you don't do anything. It, that's what's crazy to me. Believing in your own lie, like believing in your own, like, Deception. Stop comparing yourself to CT, first of all. You've right. done about a quarter of the amount of seasons. And if you know your challenge history, CT won a couple early and went on a really long drought and had to kind of like adapt his game. Like CT right. just didn't brood his way through or scheme his way through. He kind of he kind of ended up winning these last couple of times he's won because he kind of keeps his goddamn mouth shut, basically. Yeah, right. That's something Kyle hasn't learned how to do yet. He doesn't show up. CT doesn't pop off on anyone except for Kyle now. Like, I mean, he never gets in arguments. Yeah, he has to be pushed. Like, you look at this season, uh, Kyle, and last season, Fessy got in his face. It takes somebody to step to him to really, for him to unleash himself. But Fessy, I love when he does Fessy, it. I love it. Though. Literally. Fessy, like, literally was like, you're done, old dog. <laughs> and then he wins that season. That, that was the best part, like, about that. That was awesome in hindsight. Um, so this challenge has gone to shit really quickly for all teams involved. It starts a big argument, mainly between Josh, Devin, and Tori on the other side. Um, Devin and Josh are upset because of the guy's elimination, and they feel like Tori and even making that deal against them is setting one of them up to go into elimination and go home, which is pretty true. I don't hate that part of the argument. 
I also don't hate her telling them to just shut the fuck up. We're in the middle of a challenge. Like, yeah, I agree. I actually agree with Tori 100%. I get like what they're saying, but do you need to be yelling at each other from across the trenches? No, they definitely don't. Like, definitely they probably only did it once, but they like splice it in different angles like 10 times. So, um, Tori likes to talk about how she's the biggest chick. And I've been a Tory fan, like, for a lot of the past seasons. I haven't as much this season, and I don't just know if that's how they're presenting her or whatever. Um, but Casey used to be a professional football player, like a tackle football player, and rocked Tori. Yeah, like, off, lifted her off the ground. Oh, yeah. I mean – it's obviously again it's not about the weight i mean she's probably got like 20 30 pounds on casey and casey rocked her and that was technique. it after that technique center and of gravity who, who, who got lower center of gravity she's like ice box yeah that was a good hit man that was they replayed it like three times and you know what about that hit is like the way this challenge was set up where they had to run and you're like you can't see it coming because no. you that, that center point in the trench that was like a like blindside hit almost <laughs> i don't know why any people weren't just stopping at the corners <laughs> right 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 they were just running i'm gonna go into the middle dead yeah josh <laughs> was running full speed in there josh was laying some people out though uh oh yeah josh i mean they they highlighted this this episode that josh yeah. is in a lot better shape a little bit less like baby fat he's definitely been working out he's got good conditioning um maybe not good enough we will get to that. Um, yeah, besides the whole obvious like the storyline of the challenge and Emerald hating Ruby and Ruby hating Sapphire and vice versa, Sapphire was able to sneak out a win, which was outrageous because there was only three of them. Right. But that none of that, Bri, was my favorite part of this challenge. I had a very distinct favorite part of this challenge. When C when, when Big T narrated the rules. Oh my god, it was awful. So funny. Like outrageously funny. I mean, she literally said, What did she write? I like oh, I don't even have her quote, but she's like, I'm ready to get into the game. She looked like she got dropped into like space jam and she's like looking yeah. around the world like she wasn't even looking at the camera. It no, was like she, off to the side. <laughs> it was like, what is this? I think she told them that they told her that they were going to have the rules pop up behind her. So she's yeah. going to like Vanna White the rules. I really wrote needs to be on every episode, even if she's not on the season. <laughs> she needs to just be the yeah. rule in like rule reader. Like, um, next time they got to get Logan to do it. Like someone doesn't speak English that well. I did skip one thing early on, like, and this has to do with Devin. There was a quote early on, which I thought was really funny. His quote where they were talking about Amanda being added to the team. One less chef in the kitchen, yeah. but we gained a hell of a dishwasher. Yeah, right. That was fun. He does have good lines. I, I will give him that. Out, out loud, I laughed when he yeah. said that. I was like, that's a great goddamn line. Yeah. He's always um, been funny. He's just... <laughs> He's just the schemer. So I have the big T rules here. Um, yeah, Kyle screwing up the agreement. It was a mistake. CT being obviously furious. All the game within a game stuff. And like I said, Sapphire winning. Um, another note I have about that challenge, and it's just about the, the, the challenge in general. We were going to talk about this in part two as well when we talk about All-Stars, but they had Ruby playing at the end when <laughs> ruby was fighting the yeah. challenge by far of any reality show always has the best soundtrack and it's yeah, always it. topical they nail it they i would get i was dying laughing i was like oh this song's ruby isn't it and they start doing the the, the freaking chorus and i'm like yeah. i wish this was they could hear this right now like as they're upset i wish they were getting trolled I know. Music. like there was like a, a sound system that would play they need somebody next season to follow them around and one of these clever like producers and have that playing. Yeah, no, it, it is good. They do a good job of that. For sure. Um, the aftermath we've kind of led the show with, it's really the Alliance, the old Emerald team, Devin, Josh, Tori, all of, um, and what Emmanuel, they are, they are talking about the whole aftermath, the fallout. They're both giving their sides. I understand where Tori's coming from. I do understand where Devin's coming from because 
I don't think any time they've ever said like you're definitely running the final with your pod. No, they never said that. So I don't know what they're all fighting about. I like, think they're just assuming. They're assuming a lot, and that seems like almost like the producers are almost telling them to say that because like. Devin's right in that respect. Like, what are you so worried about that team for? As long as you're not getting voted in, like, what do you care? And right. so I do think she's over. I, I, I didn't get that. And especially the point he's making is like, you are literally hooking up with one of the guys. Yeah, on our team. exactly. And we're friends. Like, they're friends in real life. I've seen that on Instagram and stuff after like the last few seasons of them like feuding. They actually did yeah. a few like promotional things together and are friends. Yeah, they were on the same. I'm pretty sure they were on the same season. Are you the one? And they did not like each other. That's the, that's definitely where they they met each other. Um, we alluded to this conversation earlier as well. CT and Kyle having the conversation. Um, it's so funny. Kyle being like CT, we're friends, and he's like, "Are we?" Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and Kyle started to get up, get upset by it. And CT cut that shit right away. He's like, "No, no, no! Don't act like upset like that. Like I'm yeah. saying, we're not friends, and that's why you're gonna be upset and walk away. You're getting upset because you sneak everybody, you play both sides, and now you're crawling to me to try to make sure you're okay. But you would dump my ass in two seconds, and then you would just be like, "Well, it's something you would do, CT. So like, beat it, dude. Yeah, that was just like Kyle, Kyle being Kyle." It's, Kyle, it's like Kyle being on Survivor and going to someone he hates and asking for like the immunity idol. He would do it. Oh my god, one hundred percent. I would love some of these people on Survivor. I think it would just be so classic. Well, some, I mean, some of them were. I mean, Emmanuel. Like I kept looking at Emmanuel. I was like, this dude was on Survivor. Like it's totally different than what would happen in like America. Like no one would look. Not like there's anything in the wall. The wall with the way his tattoos and like his piercings, but that wouldn't happen in America. I don't think on the show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Awesome. This leads into the deliberations. Uh, this is where we got the classic line. Like I mentioned, Devin saying that he would be disappointed if he got voted in and even disappointed if the person who got voted in called him out because they owe him the, his, their Everything. game, basically. Outrageous. Emotions. Uh, Kyle is the agency vote pretty easy agency Yo, I, real quick can i i did not know i must have missed this since the, the the change i didn't know just the lead agency picked the winner or the person going in originally yeah. i met i must have missed that it's just the reason you don't know i don't think you noticed it as much earlier is because they are always like bigger groups that yeah. were the winning teams like emeralds won like four in a row yeah. so there's like right. six of them like and then you have sapphire win this week there's three of them it's like oh yeah i was That's like weird. oh shit um this leads to the elimination uh the elimination challenge was called burning bridges so kyle chooses josh josh has had that unfortunate reputation on the challenge now remember he did win big brother but the unfortunate reputation of being one of those guys that get to the very end of the let's call it the regular season before the finale and the final challenge and not getting to compete in a final um so he's at risk here again uh, burning bridges. You need to build a bridge by completing 16 jumps. Jumps probably like five to eight feet. Does not look like a monster jump. No. You have to hit a bell. If you hit the bell on your jump, you're allowed to pick up a plank. You bring that plank back up the ladder to the platform and place it on the bridge. There are 16 planks. So you have to have 16 successful jumps in order to get to the end, pull the lever, you win. They're both tall, so I thought this was going to be fast. Like Me I thought too. this was going to be a sprint, but they're they're stupid. Yeah, I, they never had a running start. They always just jumped flat footed. The they got thrown off. I can even see the first time you like missed. Like they're trying to jump off the platform, and they're like the bells swinging. Yeah. And you're like, oh, oh shit! Yeah. Like I'm gonna need to time it better. Right. Or like you said, you walk back that eight foot platform and you sprint and leap and like you'll probably over jump. You'll probably hit it with your freaking face. Yeah. It, 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 like I know that it was planks, but like even if you started from a running start from the side, like you don't even need, you just need like two or three steps. They're t- they're, Kyle's pretty tall. Like and so is Josh. Tall, yeah, they're both tall dudes. I And for them to be winded like that, I mean, maybe it was a lot further than we thought it was, but. You know, maybe, maybe why they're I, winded. I think they weren't. I think they, like you said, I think they weren't timing the swing of the bell. You know why they're winded? And this is a note I have here at the top of the second page. 
maybe they're winded because why do these assholes like feel like they just need to train like the day of challenges yeah, and elimination? Awesome day, yeah. What are you doing? Like, J- like Kyle was doing like kettlebell lifts in this. Yeah. Josh is running sprints up the hill. Like, what are you doing? Are you, are you yeah. oh, they're, the people, they're dumb. Like, there's so many dumb people on the challenge. Yeah, and they all probably have like alcohol sweats and stuff. Um, they drink like fishes too. Every they definitely do. Like, but I don't know. I, I really think that the, the they couldn't hit, nail down the bell swing is what I really think because that's a big difference. Like if you're jumping and it's like you jump when it's swinging here, but if you jump and it's far and it's high, you're not gonna get that. So they both struggled more than we thought they would. In the end. Unfortunately for Josh, his reputation will persist. He lost to Kyle very close. They are both at the equal planks at the end. Uh, Kyle decides to freaking steal a spot on Sapphire. He takes what's his name spot, Logan. Logan spot. Why does he want to be on a team with a guy that literally hates him so much? Yeah, I don't think CT hates him. I think he's just sick of him. Whatever, sick of him. Doesn't want to work with him. Yeah, and they all like also like there's three people on the team. So why would he go to Sap? I mean to really to Emerald. You could take like an Emmanuel know. spot. Yeah, I don't know. I, I agree with you. It's like you said, they're dumb. They're dumb and they're emotional, like you said, dude. They just forget that they're playing a game show for money. That's mm-hmm. just the theme of this episode. They just forgot what they were literally doing. Um, the preview for next week looks like uh <laughs> Tori demanding an apology for Devin and Devin literally laughing in her face. Emotions, man. It, it's so it's just it, it, it's so unnecessary. We'll see a little bit of that theme continue in part two of our episode of some unnecessary emotions in All Stars. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I actually, I definitely have a lot of comments about the show because we're doing we're going to go do episode one too, right? Uh, yeah, I mean, we could touch on, on at least a little bit. We'll touch on episode one because it's, it's kind like of a, a double. Yeah, it is basically like the setup for part one. But yeah, we'll cover we'll cover where we've stand so far. At least anything notable from last week. I actually have notes for last week. Funny enough. So, yeah. um, cool. okay. So everyone here, stay tuned. Part two will cover the first two weeks of the challenge All Stars, which you can catch um, on Paramount Plus every Thursday. There's free trials. You can get at least a free month if you just go on and give them your email address. But stay tuned for part two. And we're back for part two. We just did a little spell and we have our friend Waleed here. How are you, bro? Good. about you guys? Thanks for having me. We are good. We're glad to have you. Um, Waleed, you'll see a lot more of going forward, some reality guys stuff and some of the other things that we've teased um, outside of the reality guys. He'll definitely be heavily involved in. So stay tuned for all that. Please make sure you're liking, subscribing, commenting, whether it's here on the videos or in the Facebook groups that we're posting in on the posts, Instagram, anything, any interaction we appreciate. So mainly here for the challenge all stars season two episode two um before we fully dive into episode two we didn't cover episode one last week so we'll do a quick not really overview but we'll just touch base on our general impressions of episode one um i'll kind of kick it to you guys were there anybody as far as cast members you were excited to see cast members you were surprised we didn't see just kind of overall impressions uh well I'll i'll let you start um yeah i mean uh i mean just to go back and back in time to the first season of all stars um when they came up with the idea of bringing back a lot of the old school cast um it got everyone really excited um but then when you watched it you realized there's some people that you really want to see that you haven't seen in a long time and i feel like this season now is starting off you're starting to get the sense that a lot of the people who saw that last season happen and how much fun they were having and they probably were like okay um if they're going to do another season, I want in on it next time. And you feel like you're getting a sense like Jody, she hasn't been on since the first duel. That was when she won. Um, and she hasn't been on a challenge ever since it's been 15 years for her. Um, Brad been forever um, for him as well. He came back. Um, I was excited to see him. He's always been one of the better competitors. Um, and uh, obviously some of the, you know, the regulars that you feel like are going to start making this a habit again, like Derek and Nehemiah. 
and those guys, you know, from like way, way long ago. I'm excited to see all of them. Um, you know, it's good. And having like some of the guys from last season come back and run at it again, like tech too. So tech is, tech is one of the entertaining ones too. I feel right. More so who are you kind of surprised that we haven't seen or isn't on the season? Uh, I was going to say Mark, just because he kind of set this up and then based off of the reunion, I kind of, I can't, we actually as a whole thought Estella would be on, like, this was going to be like her redeeming tour back on the show. And I'm surprised she's not there. Yeah, no, definitely. Um, yeah, was, uh, and Anissa. Where's Anissa? Yeah, Anissa's another one. Like, I, I was shocked because she's always on every single season. Well, because so. she wasn't on – she's not on Spies, Lies, and Allies this year either. Yeah. That injury she got must have really, like – Yeah. Wait, wasn't she on – didn't she get – wasn't she on the season and got an injury eliminated? Mm-hmm. Was it an injury that got her last year? Yeah, she gets eliminated been early. for some BS every yeah. season. I mean, yeah. it, Bill, it is week 15. Like, it's been going on for forever. It so, we been. could definitely, like, slip our mind. For all we know, she could have easily been on this season. Yeah, just, like, on the D. Like, she probably was and then, like, got hurt and she had to, like, tap out or something like that. So, that's always a possibility. Mm-hmm. But uh, I'm glad to see Darrell back. I always like Darrell. Like, Darrell's you know, great. I want to see, Darrell. like, I want to piggyback off of what uh, Waleed said. I like that they're bringing, like, other people who are, like, actually good competitors. Yeah, I felt last season it was like there was a couple times you're like oh, some of these people should not be on the show. Yeah, like I always like seeing Derek. I always like seeing him. Yeah, because he's like, good. <laughs> he is good. He's a good competitor. And I remember his early days, man, back like in the early 2000s, those early challenges, man. He he made a name for himself just with like pure heart. And now right, yeah. I'm looking at now I'm watching him these seasons, and I'm like, I don't know why some people think he's a bad guy. Like he's actually like one of the one of the real real ones on the show that always comes on. So I agree. Always. I um. I love that Ayana was back. I remember her from back, even all the way back from her semester at sea. I mean, I remember that really when I was younger and I do remember her being a beast and, mm-hmm. you know, not to lead too far into it, but we do get to see her in action in episode two. And <laughs> she was badass. Awesome raise no bitch, dude. She was oh, badass. Badass. Yeah, she like was stronger she than the guys. She was. Yeah. <laughs> she just slung, well, she just like, well, she just slung the chain on her shoulder. Oh, like, Jesus. <laughs> Awesome. Um, only real housekeeping. I'm not going to really review or we're not going to really review the challenge from last week. There wasn't an elimination, but there was a you know daily or weekly challenge. Um, it ended up leaving Nehemiah and Ayana losing the challenge. And what's good in this season, and I know something Brian's a big fan of, is if you lose the challenge, you come in last, you're automatically in the elimination. Yeah. Um, and in turn, Derek and Jody won the challenge, so they're going to be able to pick a guy and a girl to go in, right? Or two guys? Oh, two guys. Yeah, and they two pick girls. like a feet, like a little pool, yeah, and then they like pick, a- yeah, they pick two guys and two girls, and then the rest of the house has to nominate one of those two guys or girls. Yep. yep. I okay. kind of like that. I like yeah. it too. I think yeah. it's cool. It is good. I like it too. It puts I, everyone. It puts everyone on the spot. You can't just yeah, like, yeah, yeah. get off easy. You know, you gotta I don't let, like just getting to nominate one person. It kind of gets you out easy when you have to put two teams up. It's the double edged sword of winning. They give you a lot of power for winning in this, and we'll we'll go over like the advantage at the end. But there's also heat for winning, and that's I think yeah. appropriate. Right, and like your votes cast are not anonymous. Like people, oh, God, can, like, I like that. I think it's good for the show or the drama of the show that like. And then, like, people get upset about things like that. Like, why didn't you not? You wanted to nominate me, and I'm not in it, which mm-hmm. we did have this episode. But we saw that but. this season on Spies, Lies, and Allies, like midway through the season when they were screen looking. And that was actually like a point that came up. They're like, why you? I saw who you were voting for. It's like, yeah, so what? You should know who I'm voting for. <laughs> <laughs> this isn't Survivor. Like, it's, yeah. it's not the same Being game. Public. Um, the only other overall point before we just transition into the actual episode two coverage, Brian and I talked about this on part one, but I, it the holds true here. The music for episodes one and two of all stars always on point with the nineties and early two thousands music. Uh, we had spice girls. I'm pretty sure we had TLC already. We've had yeah, a bunch of good people. Stuff, so. Oh my God. Yes. Whoever sings AM to PM. Mm-hmm. Um, Anything else while lead on episode one before we move into our coverage of episode two? Um, not necessarily. Yeah. I was telling you before, I feel like a lot more of the, um, you find out a lot more of the details of how the season's going to play out in, in episode two, more so than the premiere. The premiere is really just to introduce the whole cast and see where they're at in their lives and then what they hope to accomplish by the end of it, really. Yeah, I agree. 
Okay, episode two, guys. It was entitled It's So Hard to Say Goodbye. Um, like I said, the girly 90s, 2000 jams killing it. We pick up with Derek and Jody. Like I said, they won last week. They're actually speaking with Nehemiah and uh, Ayana. Ayana says she doesn't care who she goes in against. Point blank, put me in against whoever. She made a great um, metaphor since you ran track. And she's like, you can't pick who you race against. I, be- I believe her, though, now after watching this episode. Yeah, she's like, I don't care because I'm going to beat him. I'm going to beat him either way. <laughs> now I watched her, I was like, I wouldn't care either if I was that. A girl or a guy, I don't care. I'm going to be whoever. <laughs> we want the ball and we're going to score. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> um, unlike Ayana, Nehemiah is not so confident in himself. And he immediately picks the two smallest guys on the yeah. entire challenge, being Ryan and yeah. Derek C. I did appreciate that they gave him a last initial, like we're watching The Bachelor. <laughs> um, Wally, do you ever remember seeing Derek C? Um, I do, actually. Last time I did see him was on Cutthroat, the season of Cutthroat. I don't know if you guys saw that one. Um, that was one of my that was one of the seasons that I liked a lot more. I mean, from what I understand, from what I remember, um, Derek C ended up getting eliminated first Mm -hmm. and, you know, the kid, he competed hard and everything, but I feel like every challenge he's been on, he was always one of the first to go. Usually he's just been one of those guys that's been known for that, unfortunately. Um, but yeah, the cut, I mean, back in cutthroat back, it was like, it's been like what eight nine years since that one premiered. So that was the yeah, last. I think time. In 2013 is the last time he was on. Yeah, he was on other seasons too, but I didn't remember him from any of those. Just I only remembered him on Cutthroat. Mm-hmm. So they actually put a stat on there that he he's been on those two challenges and he's lost in the first week every time. Yeah, so he's and he done knows two the- challenges and lost the first week both times. Yeah, and then he may or may not end up in the challenge again this week yeah. for a third and- time. And um, we'll get to his other stuff that he had going on, but I want to pose a question to Brian specifically because I know of his fashion choices. What's worse, that Derek has lost in two first eliminations or that the other Derek was wearing a full romper Chubby's outfit? <laughs> Um, as a chubby's wear, I, I, I don't wear rompers and I never will, but I, I'm going to have to say worse is Derek C. I will support Derek. Derek is so Derek doesn't even get an initial because he's so well known as a Derek. Yeah, exactly. Honestly, in my opinion, Derek, I, I would say in the history of the entire series of the challenge, I would say Derek is pound for pound, maybe the best male competitor in the history of the show. Ooh. Pound, pound for pound. Because he's such a small guy, he's not like overly muscular or anything like that, or intimidating. But pound for pound, man, for he, he there's a lot of a lot of fire and competitive. I, I don't think that's a bad choice. I don't. I think if if I were to think even recency bias, and again, we're not going biggest guys, but pound for pound, I would take Jordan over him. Jordan, yeah, he's another one for sure. I mean, he's got one hand, and he still yeah. beats most people at everything. <laughs> yeah, no, he's definitely up there. But basically, what I'm what I mean to say is, like with Derek, though, he's he's earned the right. Oh, to yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, like, he's I mean, earned, he's, he's earned the chubbies. <laughs> yeah. He's also he's earned no and no last name initial. No, yeah, no, he he's got OG status. He yeah. also is legit, like a dad. Like he's just like right. a corny dad. Like he like his he's not <laughs> doing anything. But see. That's where the dichotomy of this episode for me kicked in, though. Like, I thought that you see him in that outfit. He's being a goofball. Oh, also, before I segue to the other point, um, when they were talking about Nehemiah and they went and talked to him about, like, who he wants to face in a challenge, one of his reasonings for Ryan was that he beat him in an elimination before. Yeah. Yeah. Why does that matter? That was in 2008, dude. What does that mean? Nothing. (laughs) <laughs> right like head-to-head matters like maybe the next year not a decade later and honestly though like i remember that season because like i remember when covid first started a year and a half ago i went back and rewatched a lot of the old seasons gauntlet yeah. three was one of them and yeah. i think that's the only season that nehemiah has ever won but i remember that elimination i just saw it like not long ago and he struggled with ryan too it's not like he walked over him ryan put up a fight like it wasn't terrible like you know so um, the other part of the reason I said the dichotomy of Derek was I thought he was goofy and lighthearted by his outfit. Um, he did not like people making fun of his outfit, though. Not at you all. You can't wear those clothes and, and, and let the haters in. You can't. 
Yeah. Well, not only did he let the haters in, he literally poor fuck. What was his name? Steven. Yeah. Poor Steven made one joke and he's like, oh, huh, you're going to laugh at me. How do you think it's going to be really funny when I put you in the elimination? And he did. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Overreaction, dude. Overreaction oh, yeah. Monday. He let the haters in, man. Not me. <laughs> can't wear clothes. Haters haters in. In. You can't. Yeah. Um, other people. So obviously we mentioned Derek C. Um, so we had the four names. Um, we had Derek C. We had, um, was it Ryan? Correct? No, it was Steve. Steven. Steven. It's so Steven, Derek C, Leah. Yep. <laughs> and who was the, and who was the, four, the second? Um, Casey. And Casey. Hey, she got like one vote. Yeah, that was a, that was the definition of a burn vote. Like they knew yeah. He, yeah. she wasn't going to get voted on. Um, the people, though, Derek C., the Cancun Alliance. There's a Cancun Alliance, and they are <laughs> not very happy, the three of them. Like, no. the one chick literally was like, I'm going to fuck you up, you vote for Derek. <laughs> yeah. Right, like, a fake alliance. Like, that's an alliance of, like, probably the weakest people there. Yeah. Who was that, too, now? I need to see. I'm going to find all my cast. It was, John, it was either it was John, John A., a. It was John um, and uh, no, it was Jasmine, Jasmine, yeah, Jasmine and John A. Those two, Jasmine and John A. The J and J of Cancun. Yeah, yeah. they're like my, they're Michael Jordan meme, and I took it personally. Yeah, <laughs> they did, they did. and I took that personally. I took that personally. <laughs> she really did take it personally. It really did. <laughs> um, so Leah and Derek voted in. Um, Leah, this was actually a really funny quote after she got voted in. Do I need to start going on Instagram and liking your fucking stuff or something or sending you Christmas cards? Yeah. Because it was funny. It did seem like it kind of came out that a lot of them reached out to each other pre-challenge, which is a very challenged thing to do. Yeah. But like she obviously was like, I have a family and a life and I didn't reach out to you people. And it seems like I'm screwed because I didn't. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's not that hard to like someone's kids posts on Instagram. Mm uh-huh. I don't care if your kid's ugly or like if like he's really not that good at soccer. You can like and put a little comment there, Leah. You know, mm-hmm. you, got, you got enough time on your hands. Yeah, maybe she's standing up for something. Yeah, see, I don't even remember the end. I, I don't even remember. I don't remember the last challenge she was on. It's been a long time for her. So well, I looked her up. We were talking about that pre-show, and like they have like their old pictures next to them. And I, she was on Real World Paris, and I do remember that season. She does not look like what she looked like on that season. Ever. Oh, I like, remember you, Paris, the Real World Paris season. Yeah, that was the season with CT and Adam. Yeah, yeah. And this, God, I, I totally forget she was on there. My God, see, that's how memorable she was. I guess I don't know. Listen, though, you're pulling out good knowledge, though. You're pulling out good knowledge. You know your stuff. Um, Derek's sister, um, the only real serious thing, if we found out his fucking sister killed herself the day before he left for the challenge. Um, really, like, obviously, it sucks. Um, you know, if you have that kind of problem, just call someone, get some help. There's hotlines out there. There's all that kind of stuff. I'm not here to put myself in anyone's shoes. I don't think personally I would have went on the challenge. I don't think I would have been able I to. Be I have two sisters. I'll tell you right now, I wouldn't have been able to. I, I, you know, I, I'm an only child and stuff. But, you know, if something were even like happened, one of like my friends, like somebody like you guys, yeah. anything, I, I just don't think I would be. And I know he said she was a big fan of the show. And again, I really don't want anyone to take this as like a real harsh criticism. Um, if that's everyone mourns differently. He probably really, it was so soon, he was probably still in shock, honestly. Yeah. I don't even think he was, like, mourning yet, in a yeah. way. It know? just hit him, it hit him, I guess, during the party they were having. I mean, it just felt like all the emotion, usually with something like that comes in all at once in one moment, you know, so. I'm not trying to criticize either, too, but, like, it's always not the best thing for yourself where, like, something crazy like that happens to you, and then you have to, like, sit through, like, confessionals and, like, have, like, a fucking camera in your face and then prying questions into you. Like, it's just not conducive like i have a i really wonder like if the mtv producers knew like if they had any idea or not yeah because they definitely have alternates and stuff for these seasons like lined up that they can get somebody else to hop in if they need it sure they usually do yeah well obviously like i said if anyone knows anyone with that kind of problem that kind of thing um it's not usually kind of stuff we cover but you know get yourself some help uh so the elimination no, not really the most apt name. Dead weight. <laughs> Where 
you know, uh, this was a really kind of cool challenge. 300 pound coffins with chains inside. So there were uh, symb like symbolic math problems. So like, oh, this mask rep plus this mask equals 10. So you had to know those two masks were five and there was other colors. So you had to do the three math problems to unlock the coffins where then you could take the chains out. The chains had three different lengths, so it would make it easier or harder depending on the chain length. But you had to get all three chains hooked around a pole at the other end of the dirt. Um, the first one was the guy's challenge. I mean, off the bat, you would think Derek has no shot, like the right. 300 pound things. He did pretty good with the puzzles, but Nehemiah was like, I, yeah, Nehemiah did better on the puzzles too than I thought. Yeah, Nehemiah's form wasn't the greatest on that first pull. I, yeah, I was going to bring that up to you, Brad, because again, the 300 pound thing, and we got to see with the women that it, if you do it correctly, is not that hard. I mean, yeah, what I was think he's doing on that first. Yeah, one? he was like doing like a weird hump. Like if he did it like the well, second time, I think he would have done. I think he would have like been like a coffin plus ahead. One of the, those sled things are like even like the football exercise. Like when you do any kind of sled workout, like once you get them going, you got to keep going. Like the momentum and the sliding is a big yeah. part of it. And they actually really almost let Derek come in and steal it. They were on the same last chain together. He kind of got himself screwed up, Nehemiah, on like the last math problem. Yeah. Um, but even though Derek made a good showing, Nehemiah did win. Um, again, not as convincing as I thought, but he did win. So unfortunately, that makes Derek C three for three on first week eliminations that's that's a trivia question in the future 100 mm -hmm. when your first reality guys trivia that's gonna come up that might be in one of the episodes where they do trivia um, i swear it will be next on next season almost guaranteed that's a that's a really i like really that those are good challenges too yeah. i really like this i miss the trivia challenges so we yeah. can see nisa get everything right because she was on every season yeah because she was a part of every single one yeah my god those were the good ones <laughs> the good you don't know they're the good old days till they're gone oh yeah <laughs> um second elimination ayana versus leah boy um yeah. The yeah. only way to compare this is like the Marshawn Lynch beast mode, basically. Yeah. <laughs> Ayana rips through the math problems, literally like picks the goddamn sleds up, basically, and just carries them through. It, it was like a flaw. If you're playing Mortal Kombat, it was a flawless victory. Yeah. yeah she couldn't even unclip the like the chain. Yeah. Leah like, literally right on that safety clip. The spread on that was minus two and a half coffins. <laughs> it really was. I would have taken the Ayana still. Yeah. Ayana, though, my God, yeah. that was dominant. She would have, you know, she, she actually got four cool. because she helped her at the end carry it across. She would, she would have beat Nehemiah and Derek combined. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> she would hundred percent yeah. would have beat Nehemiah and Derek. Yeah, she, she was good on the same math. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, I uh, so wait, yeah. So there is something else about this. Um, was that not the corniest fucking thing you've ever seen in your life when they did the whole wind beneath your wings when Ayana helped Leah yeah. finish she's not some like marathon Olympian that yeah. like broke her knee at the 25th mile and got carried across like she she just sucked at a challenge like but people were like crying Derek literally said if I were to ever watch a moment of the challenge with my son it would be this one yeah, I was I was on the opposite end of that. Yeah, you know how I am. I'm heartless. <laughs> no, that was stupid, Leah. I don't even know why. If I was Leah, I would have been like, "Get the fuck off of me!" Yeah, no, your goddamn help. I'm not finishing this challenge for what? Why am yeah. I going to drag this goddamn coffin? I'm going to take a 17 hour plane ride home. Like, right. pick rocks. I got 17 kids at home. I, I hate my life. Right. That's why these people fight so hard on this challenge. They don't want to go home to their goddamn families. Right. They don't want to go back to reality. <laughs> they don't want to go home to kids. Uh, at all. <laughs> they know if they can make it three more Wednesdays, they're out of all the carpooling for volleyball league. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, for sure. Fucking like, seriously. Um, the thing to tie this up was for winning the elimination challenge, the winners will now earn what is called a life shield. The life shield will allow yourself to save yourself from elimination on the next week, or you can use it to save someone else. Basically just a survivor immunity idol that lasts for one week. 
Yeah, you lose your vote too. You also lose your vote. Um, I guess you really wouldn't care if you're using it on yourself, but it yeah. does matter if you're using it for someone else. You know, you are setting yourself up. You're setting your someone else up to be safe. I would never give it to anyone else. Yeah, didn't they have that last season though? But it wasn't. You didn't lose your forms vote. of it where you could. But I, this is a little bit the lifesaver, like yeah. only lasting the one week. I think that's right. different. Yeah, that's new. I and think that's new. Um. So overall, I like where this season is going. I like I said, there seems like they even commented this this season is a lot more of a game. They're playing the game right away in this season. Last season, like they said, they kind of fucked around for a while and were like chumming up a little bit. This uh-huh. season, they are going right for it, which I like. Me too. Yeah, definitely. Um, we, as far as reality, guys, like I said, you will have coverage of The Bachelorette, uh, Survivor 41, Week 10. We will also be back next week with both The Spies, Lies, and Allies and um, Challenge All-Stars. We talked to Waleed. We're going to try to get him caught up on Spies, Lies, and Allies during this week as well so he can be with us for both episodes. Um, We're also going to look into a few other stuff. We know that Tiger King Season 2 dropped. We're going to take a look at it over the weekend. If we think it's something worth reviewing, we'll do that at some point next week. Um, Like I had kind of mentioned, we saw some other release dates. We have The Bachelor coming back in January. We'll have Amazing Race in January or February. They already announced uh, the Survivor 42 starts in March. We know we'll have another challenge sometime probably around February and March as well. That doesn't go on break for more than a month or two. So plenty of stuff coming from the reality guys for a normal three and obviously Waleed here jumping in. Um, And then stay tuned for the other big announcements probably coming say probably in like the next two weeks or so we'll probably go public with our announcements we're just lining some things up and doing some scheduling but a lot of fun stuff coming from the people that you love seeing or hate watch us we have some of those too so for myself for brian waleed kevin gryffindor peace